Well, greetings, church. Hello from my home to your home. As we gather together this morning in this unusual way with the storm that we have outside this morning, I pray that God blesses you wherever you are. I pray that you are warm and safe, and we know the truth that God is with you wherever you might be. So our service today will be a little bit briefer than normal. Obviously, uh, we're in unusual circumstances. We don't have a choir gathered here in my home to sing songs for us this morning, uh, but we take this time now just to simply gather around the word and gather in prayer. And before we do that, I just want to mention a couple other things going on in the life of our church. One is, Lord willing, uh, this weather will pass by quickly and we'll be able to have all of our normal activities and service opportunities throughout the week. So choir, backpack ministry, including our food distribution, which is this Thursday morning. Uh, we especially look forward to that. We remember our last one, like our in-person service this morning, was snowed out. And so we know that there's an extra need and we're looking forward to that extra for this week. And so I invite you all who are available to come out and serve at that food distribution at the Arts Center this Thursday morning. Because of the uh, Omicron surge that we're having with COVID right now, our game night that we had been looking at having this month, uh, we'll wait until next month for our first monthly game night. So that we're planning tentatively now on Friday, February 25th. We look forward to our next game night and you are all invited to come and be a part of that. In the meantime, let's take care of each other well, help our, our neighbors and ourselves get through the storm, and we look forward to uh, gathering together in person again very soon. So now I invite you to join with me in prayer as we turn our hearts to the attention of the Lord and open our ears to hear his word. God, we thank you for the gift of Christian community. Lord, we thank you for the gift of your word that you speak to us anytime and anywhere, no matter where that we are. God, we, especially today, we remember and we're additionally mindful of those who are routinely unable to gather in person with the Christian community. God, we know the physical presence of other believers as a gift. And Lord, we lift up those who are routinely not able to receive that gift. Uh, Lord, we especially pray now for Jim Gage continuing his cancer treatments. Lord, we pray for Tony Malone, who just began the first stage of his treatments in this past week. Lord, we pray for Brother Charlie and the arteriogram that he will be having on this Friday as doctors discern best how to care uh, for him and how to tend to his heart. And Lord, we pray for all among our, among our community, among our body, who have ongoing health needs that may keep them from our sight on Sunday mornings. But Lord, we know and we acknowledge now that nothing in our lives ever keeps you, ever keeps us from your sight. God, we give you praise today uh, for the great report that we had last week after praying for our church members who are overseas in Kazakhstan. Lord, we thank you for keeping them safe and for the timing of your uh, re of the report that they are safe. And Lord, we just give you praise for answering our prayer in such a quick and prompt fashion. God, we also give you thanks today for the life of Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. And Lord, for all of those who have worked so tirelessly and faithfully uh, for justice and racial reconciliation over these recent decades, especially God. Lord, we thank you for those who continue to do that type of work today, and we pray that your blessing of peace to be on them as they interact with difficult circumstances. Lord, we thank you that your vision for your people, that your heart for your community is a one people with one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. And God, we pray that you would make us one, even as you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, are one. God, knit us together as one in your kingdom and as your family in Christ. Let us properly be your body in this world. So we pray, God, today that you would make us one and bless us with the great blessing of unity. Lord, share your spirit and your life with us. Help us to be your people faithfully and well. And it is in your, your name that we pray. Amen. Amen. So I invite you now to turn with me and we'll be looking at the word today, again, fairly briefly, but we're going to be opening up to Deuteronomy chapter 8. And I'm going to be reading now verses 2 to 4. So again, this is in Deuteronomy chapter 8. And we look at verses 2 through 4. And uh, just to give you a little introduction on this, this passage, this reading occurs when the people of Israel, they've been freed from slavery in Egypt. And now finally, they've been brought to the edge of the promised land. They're about to enter into this great promised land that they've been looking forward to for 40 years since their deliverance from slavery. And the book of Deuteronomy is kind of this revisiting of all that has occurred in those years and remembering what God has called them to and what he has called them forward uh, into. And so this is uh, part of this word in chapter eight. Remember the long way that the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness 
in order to humble you, testing you to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep his commandments. He humbled you by letting you hunger, and then by feeding you with manna, with which neither you nor your ancestors were acquainted, in order to make you understand that one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. The clothes on your back did not wear out, and your feet did not swell in these forty years. Lord God, bless the reading of your word today. Open up your word to us and help us to hear from you. Give us the humility to allow our lives to be changed by what you say to us. Pray this in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. So I have to say, and this is not a, a common thanks that I probably bring up, but I am thankful for technology today. I am thankful you know, for obvious reasons. I'm thankful for uh, that while we are separated by weather and by distance, that we can be joined together around the word in this way, that we can still listen to God speaking to us together. I'm thankful that whatever other reasons may have kept us apart today, even apart from the weather, that we can be gathered together and hear the same word in this way. I'm thankful for that. And really, I mean, this sermon is brought to you on the strength of the fiber optic cable that was recently run under the ground in my yard leading up to my house. That fiber optic cable that brings internet speeds of a much greater number and speed of uh, megabits per second than our previous internet allowed. And as a bonus, it goes, uh, we bring that speed at a cheaper dollars per month rate than our old internet allowed as well. So works well on both ends here. The camera taking the video is of better quality than the than a camera that I might have had before at more, uh, you know, megapixel, megapixels per frame, uh, per, per second of video. My camera, uh, the phone that holds the camera is storing more gigabytes on the phone so I can take more video at a higher quality over a longer period of time than my, my pre previous phone allowed. And all of this is good because of course, the better each of these numbers are, the better the sermon is, right? We're all, uh, we're all happy about that. And so the faster, you know, like on a Monday through Friday, the faster you get to your workplace, of course, you know, higher speed, the more work that you're able to get done in the day. We live in the course of numbers where we measure the speed, we measure the efficiency, we measure the strength of the things that we are a part of and the things that we do. And the better the numbers are, of course, the better life is going for us. Well, today, we've all come to a moment where we're focus, our focus comes on a different set of numbers. Our focus now is reduced to looking at the temperature and what exactly number of degrees Fahrenheit the temperature is reading outside as we approach and, and go past the freezing point. Our focus is on the number of inches of precipitation that have fallen outside and will continue to fall throughout the rest of the day. These are different kind of numbers than the previous ones I was mentioning. These are numbers that don't change quickly. These are numbers that don't measure efficiency, but they just describe the moment in which we are living right now. They tell us a little bit about what it feels like outside, and they just describe this moment that we live in. We are living in the middle of a storm, in the middle of snow, in a moment where we are all slowed down by what is happening outside our doors and we are brought to a pause, to a quiet, to a stillness that this moment brings. We're not traveling in miles per hour. We're going in numbers of steps, and snow boot steps at that, or, or if you're lucky and you're sitting inside and comfortable, maybe these are slipper steps, and you've learned the number of steps from your couch to the refrigerator and back again. This is the kind of moment that we are in right now, and the good news is we find that when we are slowed down into these kind of moments, often by no decision of our own, but by maybe the failings of our own body or simply the processes of age, or in this moment, by the weather that's occurring outside our door, when we are slowed down and forced to slow down, we find that when we're brought to this moment of slowing and pausing and stopping, we find that God is already here in this moment. That God, with all of his omnipotence, omniscience, all of his strength and ability and capacity, God is ready to meet us in these moments that have nothing to do with the type of things that we accomplish within them. Moments that have nothing to do with going to places or moving things or accomplishing things. Moments that are all about simply living within them. It is good news that God meets us when we come to these moments because we are again and again forced into them by the circumstances of life. God has been waiting for us here. God meets us here, and God is with you right now, in this moment, 
where you sit. Because you see, God's grace and love and mercy, they can't be measured with numbers. They can't be measured with the uh, measures of efficiency that we normally use in our life. God's grace and love and mercy can't be counted like the numbers of dollars in your hands. They are what they are, and they are always at their fullest. Wherever God is present, the fullness of his love is present there with him. And we know, like Romans 8 tells us, that there is no place we can go where we are not present with God, where God is not present to us. There's nowhere we can go where God was not there first. So the only question I have for you today is, is God present with you today? Are you present with God today? When the Israelites were freed from slavery, as this passage that we read helps recount, they were miraculously and powerfully freed by the hand of the Lord. God accomplished many things over those days of the ten plagues that he brought in the land of Egypt to free his people, to lead them out, as he did things like parting the Red Sea, as he did things like destroying the army of Egypt that was chasing after them, as he did things like feeding them in miraculous ways and taking care of them again and again and again. God's, God's arm of strength was shown in all of its strength. God was in their journey from Egypt to the promised land. He was with them every step of the way. The Israelites left a place where they knew the way of life. They knew as bad as it was in Egypt, they knew what that life was like. It was the way of life they had grown accustomed to. And they were led suddenly out into the wilderness where the pace of life, where the way of life was entirely different. Egypt had a way of life that was far too fast for anyone to keep up with. They were slaves in that land. It was dragging them along with it. Here in the wilderness, suddenly they were not being dragged. They were moving slowly and they were being led by the presence of God. In the wilderness, with some tens of thousands of people in tow, the nation of Israel did not move with any swiftness. They didn't accomplish much of anything out there at all. They simply lived as they fed their babies, as they cared for the elderly among them who were not able to move at the same pace as others, as they took care of one another and ate meals, tended to the sick, and simply lived and journeyed together for those 40 years. They were slowed down, slowed way down by the necessities of life, by the things that life brought to them. You know what that feels like. You know what it feels like to be slowed down by what life brings to you, to be slowed down in ways that we would not have chosen for ourselves by what life brings to us. And so the Israelites wandered through the desert and they, they had to spend their time and their energy finding water, looking for food to eat, feeding one another, caring for one another. And God entered into all of this. God, who has so much strength that he could part the Red Sea, so much ability that he could create the world with a word. That God journeyed with his people in all of their weakness and slowness, day by day, step by step, rock by rock, through the wilderness. He provided them water when they were thirsty. He provided them food to eat when they were hungry. And he protected them from famine and pestilence and from enemy armies that wished they were not there. But most of all, more than all the things that God did for the people, God was with the people on the journey. The defining image of the wilderness years in the, uh, as they headed to the promised land was God going before his people, a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night that they could follow after and know that they were taken care of. The pillar of cloud and fire that went behind them to protect them from the army of Egypt that chased after them, that went ahead of them to drive the sea apart, that went before them to lead the way until finally they came to the edge of the promised land and could finally enter in. And God didn't, you know, come and use his strength to create a monorail out of nothing to bring his people suddenly to the promised land. He didn't teleport them from one place to the other. He didn't skip over the journey. He entered into the journey with them. The all-powerful, all-knowing, all-present God was present to his people. And he led them in his love on this journey. Give or take three miles an hour, probably a little bit slower. God moved with his people as they walked and plodded 
on their way. God, who could be everywhere at once, who is everywhere and all times at once, moved with his people. Less than three miles an hour, one step at a time, through the wilderness. As slow as the slowest among the people could travel, God traveled with them at that speed. We all, when we think of God, we like to emphasize God's great abilities and all the things that God can do for us. We like to emphasize his strength, his capacity. We like to emphasize what God can do for us. But God's emphasis and all of his actions and all that he does is that he is here with us. And who God is, who God is who is with us is the one who loves us. The same God who traveled with his people in the wilderness is with you today, stuck at home in the storm. With you today, stuck at home with illness in your body. With you today, stuck at home, unable to move out of the house and drive your own car as you once were able to. The God who loved the people of Israel loves you where you are right now. This is the God who never gets impatient with us when we move a little slower when we feel impatient with ourselves, God is not impatient with us. This is a God who never grows weary of tending to our needs when we need a little bit extra care. The God whose strength never runs out, who never is too tired to get up with us in the middle of the night when we need that care, when we arise and need some tending to at 3 a.m. God is present to us in the wee hours and God's tender, loving care continues to come to meet us. Who God is who God is with you now is the God of love. God shows that love by being with us. Wherever we are, however we are, God is with us. God is with you, brothers and sisters, right now. Today, with this storm outside, all of us are brought into a very slow and a patient speed. Some of us were there already by illness or age or injury. But all of us are there right now, and we have found that God meets us there. He doesn't leave us behind with all of his great ability, but he is with us. However we are moving, however we might be, God is with us. Here we are. Here we are. And I say to each of you, God's love for you is greater than the storm. God's love for you is greater than the illness. God's love for you is greater than the treatments. God's love for you is greater than the aches and the pains. God's love for you is greater than the limitations of these bodies and this place in which we live. God's love for you holds us up over the waters. It holds us up in all the bumps and the bruises that this life can bring. God's love is greater. Your life cannot be measured by what you are able to do. Your life is measured by the amount of love that God has poured out into you. And that love is without measure. That love that God has for you is infinite and immeasurable. And it always, as we discover more and more of it, there's more and more of it to receive. God's love, my friends, cannot be counted, cannot be measured. It doesn't move with great speed. It moves at every speed. God's love is with you even when you are unable to bring anything back to God. So today, in this day, while we are all slowed down, while we all pause and stop, take this moment to remember that God is with you. Open your hands and pray and say, God, here I am. I want to be with you too. Love fills the space in which you live right now. Whatever else might be there, love is there first and last and above all. So all this love means one thing, and I want to tell us this right now. You are worth the infinity of God's love. You are worth all that God has given you because he has said you are, because he made you. You are worth his very life. God is with you today, friends. He cares about you, and he has not forgotten you. Whatever else this day might bring, it brings with it the love of God. So let me pray for us a benediction now as we go forth with God's blessings. May God bless us and keep us. May he meet us in this moment and in whatever place we might be. May he bring us closer to his kingdom, one step 
and one movement at a time. Let me read these couple of verses which come uh, shortly after what we read before. The Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with flowing streams, with springs and underground waters welling up in valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and figs, trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land where you may eat bread without scarcity, where you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and from whose hills you may mine copper. You will eat your fill and bless the Lord your God for the good land that he has given you. So go, friends, in whatever land you might be, be blessed by the Lord, and may his blessings overflow you to bless the world around you. Amen.